program and a project that I didn't have to do any work on. <laughs> so that should be your takeaway from this. <laughs> is find something that works for you guys that you don't actually have to do the work on. Um, and I'll start by saying also that sometimes the hardest part of my job, and I'll tell you why, is engaging our local citizens. Um, Sanford is really nicely situated in the center of the state. We are a mere 25 minute drive to the nearest Target. Um, for those of you guys who don't have Target, you'll know, you'll know the impact of that statement. We're 40 minutes from downtown Raleigh, we're 40 minutes to the Triad, we're like 35, 40 minutes from Pinehurst, and that's super great, except that um, people who are, from, most of the people who are from Sanford have grown up hitting the road whenever they want to eat or shop or spend their leisure time, and so it's this habit it's just this involuntary thing that they're like oh let's go out to dinner hop in the car drive to carry so part of what we're doing now is you know and i've been in sanford 11 years is trying to break that habit and get people to stay in sanford so even as our downtown grows and progresses and adds the amenities that they've been <coughs> leaving for it's just ingrained in them to go so this will help you guys understand how we're engaging them a little bit more so um the City of Sanford Appearance Commission is actually who has spearheaded this project. And they're led by um, our historic preservation planner, Liz Whitmore, she's city staff. And their job is basically the beautification of Sanford. And so one of their most successful efforts has been our mural trail. So they saw a need for um, beautification of some of our less attractive painted walls. Um, in our downtown, you cannot paint a building unless it's already been painted. So we've got lots of walls that had been painted and needed some um, love and attention. So they also paired this need with a desire to preserve our history. And we've got some really interesting um, historical moments in Sanford. Some stuff that, you know, is special to us and um, might be lost um, when we lose some of our historians. So they paired the need of beautification with this desire to maintain and tell our history, um, which also played right into our mayor's desire to use beautification and preservation to create an arts district downtown. Um, in 2015, we didn't have any murals. We had a few ghost signs that were in need of um, repair and care. And we now have 11 murals and ghost signs in downtown, plus two more murals outside of downtown with several more um, in the works. So they put together this great mural art trail map that's constantly, I can't even tell you how many, what version this is because we've added so many murals in such a short amount of time, she's constantly updating this. Um, but it shows where all the murals are downtown with pictures of them and in the inside, there's like a little story of each one of them as well. So how did they do it? Um, it was a lot of staff time. Uh, Liz Whitmore has dedicated a lot of her time to doing this. Um, it's a lot more than just a policy or an ordinance. Um, it's staff time to research, staff time to plan and coordinate. She's got to fundraise. She's got to build relationships with property owners, with artists, and um, keep the donors happy. That's a big part of the time she spends. So basically her process is um, to identify locations um, and subject matter. And sometimes it's just an ugly blank painted wall that needs to be fixed. And sometimes the location actually pairs well with the story. So we've got an old tobacco warehouse and across the street from it, we've got a brand new tobacco mural. Um, and sometimes it is just that a group of people have the funds that they've raised and come to her and say, we wanna see this mural. And if it fits in with their plan and their program, that's how it gets done. Um, so she does a call for submissions. She and her commission work together on what they wanna see coming. They do a call for submissions. They've got an RFP process that I'm happy to share with you guys. Um, I'm pretty sure she actually just modified it from the um, Arts Council and made it work for Sanford. Um, she submits it through the North Carolina Arts Council and through our local Arts Council and all of our social media avenues as well. 
they will only accept artists who are from North Carolina. Um, in fact, all of, all of our murals have been done by two artists, one who's local to Sanford and one who is not. Um, so they receive and review proposals. Um, all of the proposals come in with a mock-up, they come in with estimates. Um, she gives them to her commission blind so they don't know who's doing what, so there's no favoritism. Although for a while it was the same guy getting chosen every time, but honestly, he had the best stuff that was submitted. Um, mural scheduled and the work begins. There's so much in between all of this though. There's paperwork, there's contracts, there's insurance, there's negotiations with the property owners, with the muralists, there's edits made. You can see on this one in the top right hand corner, those sort of color blocks in the background. When he started painting this mural and he started, put, I think he was on the second row of color blocks and sh her phone was just blowing up. People hated it. Um, we're very lucky that this muralist is super easy to work with and so she went to him, they came up with a plan to change it and at the bottom is what it looks like now. Um, but she, you have to have that really good relationship where she can walk up to him while he's painting and say, I hate to tell you this, but nobody likes it. <laughs> and he was like, okay, no problem, we'll come up with something else. So lots of I's dotted and T's crossed and making the families and the, the major funders happy. That's really the kicker there. So um, she does a lot of fundraising. Um, all of these murals have been paid for with private money. So $74,635 in murals in the last three years is what she's done. And maybe $10,000 of that have been the grants. Like our organization gave a grant to that African American mural because it was so close to having all the money to get done. We wanted to see it done. Um, the Arts Council have given some, but she's done note cards, um, stationery for each of the murals that she sells. Um, they did a bike ride. The, um, the new thing, especially with the local artists, is they come up with a smaller scale version of it and they'll sell raffle tickets for it. I did not win that. I was not happy. <laughs> So like Liz said, we have the first true 3D mural in the state. This is on the side of our um, Yarbrough's ice cream place. And they had a farm, so this is their, the old Yarbrough's dairy farm. Um, the cows, the heads are 3D, and the milk cartons on either side are also 3D. Um, <laughs> she does some dedications for these, and that's great because this is where we start engaging our local community officials will come out, citizens come out, she's always got it themed. Um, I don't know how often you can see a dedication with a cow and milk cartons, but I've got a picture of Liz in a milk carton speaking at the microphone. Um, we did one at Depot Park and she had a vintage plane flyover that was talked about for months after that as just a really cool thing to happen over Depot Park in downtown. Um, and now that it's a really robust trail with 11 murals, we can start doing a lot more events. So now my organization will start playing off of it and creating events, big and small, to draw people downtown for it. We've also got a lot of publicity. Um, print, this is a magazine. This is a podcast that was done with our mayor um, out of Raleigh. And Tar Heel Traveler was in town last month doing a video on all of our murals. So how does, oh, that's really small. Um, how does it support my organization's economic development strategies? We have a strong desire to share our history and preserve our history and engage our citizens um, and to work with our local public arts organizations. We've got a ton of local artists in Sanford and they're very segmented. Um, so it's been one of our goals to bring those organizations together and have a more cohesive arts program in downtown Sanford. Um, and that's, this mural program has played into all of that. Um, it's also encouraged some other artists to open shops. Um, just in the last couple months, we've had a new chocolate shop open and we've had a pottery place open and coincidentally, right where we want that downtown arts district to be. So that's our, lit. We, have a, we have two 3D murals in downtown Sanford now. Um, that's the tobacco warehouse one that I was telling you about. So the leaves and the um, mule stick out off the wall. And that's it. I have I didn't bring handouts because they're lengthy, but I'm happy to share them with Liz and you can send them out to everybody. That'd be great. Thank you.